And um, and that, that's why some people recommend the dry season, which starts, uh, you know, like December to through April, May. But in my opinion, um, that's maybe not a big, you know, issue because actually rainy season is a very, a very nice time to come as well. It, it's, when the people say rainy season, they think it rains every day, but it's not like that. Actually, it's just occasional rain in the afternoons. And uh, rainy season, what they call rainy season, green season, people call it. Uh, it starts uh, from like August, well, May, late May, all the way through December, pretty much. And um, I will say maybe something in between that long period of green season, there are little open gaps of, of you know, months in where it's not too rainy and it's not too crowded, you know, and, and prices are relatively low and birds are, bird activity is pretty nice. And that will be September, October, well, sometimes July, but September, October, I think it's, to me, my favorite time of the year to, to be birding in Costa Rica, you know. All but right, depends, so I'm just yeah. going to do a, yeah, I'm just going to do a brief introduction to start our the call. Um, welcome, <laughs> everybody on this again is the Partnership for International Birding, uh, Costa Rica Birding Zoom call. Um, I suspect we'll be doing these every, every two or three months. Um, on, on the phone, phone call today is Juan Diego Vargas, who is really one of the rising stars of Costa Rica birding. Um, I'll do a little more thorough introduction to him in just a second. Um, I just want to lay down some ground rules for the call. Um, every, I mean, every time we do a call, we seem to make it a little more loosey goosey. Um, if, if you don't have a lot of background noise, feel free to have an open mic. Um, I just have my dog barking in the background. Um, but anyway, um, so uh, this is, we're basically just going to kind of review some aspects of Costa Rica bird, bird while watching, kind of going through our, our longer itinerary, um, which will hit some of the sites. Um, if you have a question, um, either just wait for a break in the presentation or text it to me and I will feed it to Juan Diego. Um, but truly, we've been finding sort of a little more open full forum is a better way to go. Um, so feel free to jump, 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 jump in. Um, and if you ever, ever have a good question, don't be afraid to write it down in case, you know, you don't want to forget anything. I may have to mute soon because the Lola's dog is being noisy. Um, but anyway, I'll just introduce Juan Diego. Oh, and he's also sitting at a bird feeder at La Selva National Park, or close to uh, La Selva Biological Research Station. Um, so when, bird, when good birds fly into the feeder, we'll have a little birding break in the middle of the presentation as well. Um, so uh, with no further ado, I'll do a brief introduction here and then we'll start. So Juan Diego has been a guide for about a decade um, and he's been a birder for a long time. Um, he has truly worked for a lot of international birding companies and um, he has a BA degree in ecotourism and a degree in management of the ecotourism. Um, and if you have any good questions about Costa Rica birding, he does bird throughout the entire country. Um, so with no further ado, I will introduce Juan Diego. He is looking like he's getting on a bird. I'm going to mute for just a second. But wait, you gotta, you gotta unmute yourself, dude. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Charles. Um, it's a pleasure to be with all of you today. I'm uh, here in Costa Rica. Uh, pretty nice day, actually. Uh, it's kind of hot down here, but uh, but we will wait to see what happens in the feeder. And while that, we can speak, we can talk about Costa Rica and, and birding here in this wonderful country. So it's my pleasure to be here with you. So we can start maybe with a little feeder action. We have two two birds right now. So let me know if you can see this properly. One second, please. Uh, I need to change the camera like this. And let's see. 
One second, I will set it up in a second. Yeah, hey, Arturo, I may need you to facilitate for a part there. Um, paving the road sure. next to our house and yeah, shoot, man. You got a you got a bird there, Juan Diego. So far, it looks just well, kind I'll, of blank. Well, I'll be able blank. to do it again. <laughs> sure. That was the clay color thrush type of uh, the clay color thrush. You have that in parts of USA, but that's the national bird of Costa Rica. So that's just uh, to start the presentation and start talking about the birds. Uh, Arturo will have a presentation about country with a little map, so we can we can understand better how's the birding doing in Costa Rica and how's uh, uh, and what what we sh what we can expect to see when we are on a trip in Costa Rica. So, sure. um, if you have any questions, as Charles said, um, it would be my pleasure. Yeah. To so, um, on our typical tour, Juan Diego, um, on our classic sort of dry dry eye season tour, um, we start in the Central Pacific Coast. Um, one of the key sites there is Carrara National Park. What are some of the nice birds you get at Carrara? Uh-huh. Uh, let me see. Do, do we have the presentation? Yes. The first part, um, Costa Rica is basically divided in five birding areas. So we will say, you know, in general terms. So the Central Pacific is, well, the Pacific area has like Northwestern and Southeastern, as you can see in the map in the PPT. And um, Northwest, it's dry. Southeast is more rainy. But what we do in trips in, with PIB, it's that we choose a place, a, a strategic location right in the center of the Pacific coast that is called uh, Carrara National Park, as Chuck said. Um, that if Arturo, can you pass to the next one? Uh, that location over there you see there, where you see the number one, there's where normally our main like birding location at, uh, or base wanna be. We can get birds from the northern dry area and southern Pacific area as well in that location of Carrara National Park. Uh, maybe two of the best birds we can get in the Central Pacific, which is, um, as, as Chuck said, where we start. Uh, Arturo, can you pass to the next one? Those two are probably my two favorite birds. One represents very well the South Pacific. The one on the right, that, that toucan with the red bill, it's probably one of the best toucans, I will say, in the world. It has a really, really small range. Uh, only Costa Rica and Western Panama, it's endemic. So that, that's called Fiery Build Arasari. So and it's one of the specialties we're always looking for in the Pacific area, uh, an endemic to South Pacific area. And then the one on the left is a very beautiful type of mutmut. -mut. It's called Turquoise Brown Mutmut. -mut. And that's also um, a stunning bird. That, that one belongs more to the, the driest part of the country, the Northwestern Pacific. And in this place where we bird in Canada, they, they happen to mix you know, all those species and those two birds can be seen in the same location we usually bird. We normally spend a couple of days there in the, in the Pacific and we're gonna be looking for those targets. Those pictures uh, were uh, taken by myself. So all those pictures are, I took it and you know, scouting trips or trips with a PIB or, and feel free to ask any additional question about the pictures if you want, if you have. That turquoise brown mot mot caught, a, caught a lizard. So as you can see, it has a lizard on its bill. And if you can see that in the picture, it's pretty, pretty interesting too. Uh, well, next one, maybe we can change if you don't have any questions in this one. I have a question about the RSIs. Was that a family unit? That, that uh, the group of three, you mean? Yes. Uh -huh, Were correct. they siblings they, and an adult, maybe? Or? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, they do. Arasaris are very uh, social. So when you see, it's very interesting because sometimes in the afternoon you can see like uh, their little nests. You know, they nest in tree holes, and you see them going inside. It's always very interesting to see how many of them can fit in one of those little holes because you can see up to five small toucans getting you know, fitting in there. Then you see all the bills stuck in together in the in the hole. So that's, that's, that's a pretty cool thing. The Arasaris are toucans, are, is a subfamily of toucans that are normally very social. They move in small groups. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's the case. We don't know if those are siblings or, or couples or what, but they are definitely a family group. 
Thank you for the question. No, then the second place we normally go in, um, <clears throat> in uh, itineraries on, on partners for international birding, uh, we try to do a little bit of the higher part in the mountains. So the place we were in, in Pacific lowlands, it's normally a little bit more like, you know, hotter and more humid. Um, and then if we go to a little more like chilly environment, more, more like cooler temperatures, but it's uh, the cloud forest of Costa Rica, that's gonna be in the mountain tops. Uh, there are, as you can see in the orange and that little map, there are several cloud forest locations in Costa Rica, near the Central Valley, a little bit in Talamanca mountain range, and a little bit in the north. You get this very famous place called Monte Verde. Monte Verde, it's a, I don't know, it's a, cloud, it's a biological re uh, station, uh, reserve, but it's also a very good birding area. Um, yeah, if Arturo, can you pass the next one, please? Hey, and we can we can slow down a little bit. Um, oh, nice. Uh -huh. How 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 many trips you get the three bottle bell bird on? All of them or most of them? Uh, how what how often? Oh yeah yeah yeah. On on your, on your typical bird birding trip, you you I, I know you hear it. <laughs> uh, no, if, <laughs> but if, but do but do you see it on on every tour? About eighty percent of all tours, or what do you do, man? It depends. It depends on the season. I will say, um, three wild yeah. bellbird. It's it's a spectacular cotinga. It's one of my favorite birds. Um, they migrate. They migrate. Um, you know, in the mountains up to the top and down to the bottom, even to ocean. You know, sea level, and uh, they are looking for fruits. So outside of the breeding season, that I will say, breeding season starts in July. You know, June, July, August, September, mm -hmm. October. You can you can for sure see it in Monteverde. You know, they are calling, they are loud, they are breeding at that time of the year. So they're going to be calling all day from the same perch. So once you hurt one, you can chase it. You can, you know, try to find that perch. And with some time, a little effort, you will eventually find it. So once I'm in July, June, September in Monteverde, I will say it's very likely you will get the bellbird. So it's, it's unlikely to, to miss it. Yeah, because it's, it's so loud and it's so easy to track that you know you have all day to find one sitting on the perch and they are regular at the perches so yeah you can you can expect to see if you saw one last year in one perch you can expect to see it again next year so yeah it's, it's likely to see it in those months out of that yeah. breeding season time it becomes more you know sporadical and it depends on your luck you know if you're walking and you know even in Carrara I've seen it in Carrara just in January yeah. or no. yeah, February now, how many typical Cotingas do you see on a, on a tour? I mean, for a lot of Costa Rica bird guys, I mean, there are Costa Rica birding tour companies named after a Cotinga. And um, I mean, I mean, <laughs> we have a mutual friend, friend there. Um, but, um, but uh, I mean, but truly, I mean, they're, they're pretty incredible birds. Um, I mean, most of the family is pretty spectacular. I do find the bellbirds are easy to hear, take a lot of work to find. I, I mean, mm -hmm. that's been my personal experience. But, um, but I mean, how, how many co Cotinga species do you usually see on a typical tour? Um, the 14-day well, version. 15-day version. I will say we probably get three wattle bellbirds. We are likely to get turquoise Cotinga. Um, maybe uh -huh. we're lucky yellow bill Cotingas. We have three. Um, well, maybe four or five. I will say not many, yeah. you know, because uh, yeah, they're, yeah. they're tough. But birds. I mean, they're a super nice family. Right. And then we oh, just yeah. had the picture up on um, the Arisaris also in that group are the Arisaris, the two Ucanants, the two Canets and the two Ucans. Um, I mean, my first trip to Costa Rica, you know, I saw my first Toucan and I thought it was the most you know amazing thing ever because of the you know the cereal box thing right <laughs> yeah no 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 right so i mean for an american kid to see a toucan is a big deal um but i mean tip if typically how many toucans irisaris and toucanets do you get on it on a on a on a four, oh, that's four, a, that's a that's a much tour. yeah that's a much easier so those are easier birds to get right yes um, the only one that is actually we normally well, in some tours we get to see them all all the ones that are in the country so we're mm -hmm. talking about two type of arasaris and three species of uh, big toucans 
and no two species of arasaris, two species of big toucans, and one toucanet. Well, two toucanets. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So, so we have pretty easy to get, six. but five different species. Uh, six. We, we were six different species. I will say we get five in every tour. Gotcha. So we normally gotcha. don't don't miss any except the yellow ear toucanet, which is the hardest right. one of all. Yeah. And that's a more local bird. That's a bird that likes the um, the foothills, so which is the next oh, place we're gonna be talking about. But that's um, okay. it's very unpredictable. They like to they like to feed right. on certain fruits. They move up and down, so it's it's a little bit complicated. Yeah. Yeah. So let's spend a little. I mean, we've got plenty of time here. We got forty five minutes left. Any anything coming up to the feeder at all? Uh, right now we have clay colored thrush only. I can help you with that, but I think you know that one. So right, right. it's a hot day. It's yeah. a pretty hot day. You know, it's very sunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, of course. Sunny. We always pick yeah. the days that are going to be the worst for the bird watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was it was rainy yesterday, and we had a lot of birds at the feeder. But you know, in this time of the year, you just never know what's going to happen with the weather, and it's very sure. sunny right now. Yeah. But yeah. we will wait. Hey, so 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 back. Any anybody got any questions about the sort of uh, higher montane birds and higher montane areas? And and if not, I'll I'll ask the classic question that we've always had a lot of discussion about: Is the resplendent cats 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 all? I mean, historically speaking, like Monte Verde was kind of the uh, sort of classic place to get resplendent cats all. And then recently there's been a, I forget the name of the place. What's, what's the cra outed place called? Uh, that's Savegre. Savegre, yeah. I mean, a lot of people feel they got to go to Savegre to see the cats at all. And truly eight, 10 years ago when we were planning Costa Rica trips, that was the thing, man. We had to go to Savegre. But now, typically, at Savegre, you're birding with 100, 150 people at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. Savegre, it's becoming more and more popular for the Quetzal. Although, you know, Quetzal is actually not a rare bird. You know, Quetzal is, is pretty common in all the cloud yeah. forests. So you, you might expect Quetzal in many locations in cloud forests in Costa Rica. You know, it's a trogon, so it's always tricky a little bit tricky you know they call if you find if you know the call you can you know find it if you know their feeding sites is much easier uh but yeah people have the feeling that they have to go to savegre and um so you get you know a number of uh, people there waiting for the quetzal and it's only like two or three places where you can see it in savegre so people normally get you know those places get really crowded in the morning and i had experience several times there to, to be birding on a road with yeah 100 people 80 people at the same time. So that's that's something we try to avoid in this in this itinerary. Right. So, so so we've been avoiding Savegre just because of the crowds. And and unfortunately, um, besides the bird watchers, there's a lot of just general tourists there who have to see the Quetzal. So they see a you know a talented guide with a <clears throat> scope and they sort of swarm in on on our group. So typically you know, I mean, Monte Bay Air Day, I know it gets very cloudy up there. I mean, do you, where do you typically find the cats at? So or you find it two or three times over the tour? Uh, well, we do. Um, we normally use, you know, local contacts to know where is our best shot. You can try for the cats uh -huh. in several places. <clears throat> uh, mostly the Monte Verde Reserve and the Santa Elena Reserve. And then there is another place that I like a lot. That's a new place. It's called Curicancha Reserve. So Monteverde uh -huh. is famous because there are plenty of reserves around. And I have plenty right. of friends there. So what we know, what we normally do, it depends on the season. So we just texted my friends and said, well, you know, where's been the Quetzal scene lately? Where you saw it yesterday? And then they tell me, well, there's a feeding tree here or there. So we don't, we don't lost our chance. So we go directly to the feeding tree in the morning and then we spot it there. And that's that's yeah. normally how we do it. If if it's not a big if if it's a big deal, if it's not a big deal, we just bird normally, you know, in the trails. I mean, yeah, it yeah. happens to be there. We just you know get it, uh, which it which is normally what it happens. You know, you're birding there and you heard it, and then there it goes. It's a quetzal there, and it, it's not like something that really needs to be you know chased. Uh, but if, for some people, 
you know, it's, it's like a must. So in that case, we just arrange everything to go for the secure shop. And there you go. Um, anybody got any questions about any of the high, the Highland birds? Any, Highland any birds, questions about Monte? Yeah, shoot. Highland birds are one of the probably specialties. Are you can hear the great tailed grackle calling in the back here? Uh, <laughs> Highland birds are probably the specialty of Costa Rica because most of the endemics. I don't know if you know, but Costa Rica has around 100 endemic bird species. But from those 100, 70 are shared with Panama. So a lot of the birds we have are shared with Panama and are located in the highlands of Costa Rica. So all that line you see in the map with orange, that orange extends a little bit into Panama, into Western Panama. And all those birds are trapped in these mountains because there is lowlands in Nicaragua and lowlands in Panama, in central Panama. So these birds are trapped and are over the millions of years, they evolved to be endemic. So we have 70 birds that are only located in Costa Rica and Western Panama. And those are in that orange area you see in the map. Hey, Juan Diego, let me gotcha. ask you something. So how long have the sure. trees been on the cloud forest? How, how long what, sir, again? How long of the tour you spend on the cloud forest? We normally spend two nights. We know that's that's pretty much pretty much three full days, you know, or two and a half days of birding. Um, so that's normally what we spend. We can, you know, depending on the on the group, sometimes we can spend a little more three three nights or or bird two locations. What we do often is that we offer uh, more cloud forest, more uh, highlands as an extension at the end of the tour. So to the Talamanca area, for example, because even if it's crowded, it's still very, very good birding there. So um, we like to do, you know, we need, we need to maximize the time, of course, but we will like, you know, if it's possible, we would like to do more cloud forest birding because cloud forest and highlands of Costa Rica, it's a key birding location if you are, uh, if you are here. Great. Any, any other uh, questions about cloud forest birding or any Monte Verde, Verde area birding. Um, and there you go. I, I have one last question about, you know, Monte Verde, Juan, Juan Diego. You know, years ago, there used to be just like one road up there and it was pretty, it's a pretty rough drive. Is that still the one way up or is that an improved road now? <laughs> they, and I'm talking 20 years ago, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's two <laughs> roads. <was> now. Young. <laughs> yeah, okay. Two roads now to Monteverdi and one is paved. That's that's very, very, you know, recent news. They paved that road just maybe six months ago. So that, oh, that really? bumpy road, yeah, that, that bumpy road you remember, it's no long no out anymore. You know, it's all paved and you can go, you know, in a quarter of the time it used to take. Yeah. Now, um, I, I truly, I mean, I was, I mean, I was not yet a birder when I first went to Costa Rica. Um, so, um, but I do remember stopping along the way at some pond. I think I was looking at night, night heron or a tiger heron or something. I don't remember, but, um, I mean, is there pretty good birding along that road to kind of break, break, break up the drive or is it pretty much a straight shot? Um, no, well, there are some nice birds in there particularly if we need dry forest species, because all that road, uh -huh. the one that's paved, it passes through nice uh, dry forest. So if we need some mm -hmm. of the dry forest species, it's nice for stopping, you know, occasionally. And uh, it provides normally some, some nice, really nice views as well. So yeah, it's, it's very panoramic. And it has maybe one or two, you know, birds that we probably are missing at that point. So, so it's a, it actually t sort of turns into a, uh... Um, a pleasant birding drive, um, so that's kind of a positive thing. Versus yeah, it used yeah. to just be like a four-hour long, long, long haul. So that's a plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Yeah, it's becoming more and more pleasant. All right. Before we move on to the next, the next set of uh, set of places. Um, anybody got anything else they want to ask about the cloud forest? or the Monte Verde area. Let me see if there's Hearing, a panager. Oh, wait. 
Oh, nice. We got Sanager a tank. The feeder. Sanager and the feeder. Let's hopefully get him in the picture here. I see a bird in the lower right hand side of the scope. I see something Can you on see the lower that? right hand side of the scope. Um, probably if you zoom in, lower... it will be better. Lower. Um... Well, let me see if I can fix that. I think it's lower right. No, no, I just think I saw it move in the middle. Middle, middle. Yeah, there's a bunch of bananas on the right. Uh, okay, I'm so to the left to, of the bananas. To the left of bananas, he's picking, he's hanging upside down, and that. Can you hurts. zoom it, Juan Diego? Can you zoom it like I'm a trying, bit? I'm trying, but I'm having technical issues here. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to zoom. It flew. Okay, we're working on. Oh, he flew off the little fart. <laughs> oh, did I say that loud word too loud? <laughs> I do sometimes curse birds when they fly off, sometimes quietly, but in this case, I did use that loud word. Um, I, so, I so what species did, did But that, that was a palm tanager. Yeah. Palm tanager. That was a palm, palm tanager. Yeah. Palm tanagers, yeah. is, um, you know, tanagers are always nice to see here in the tropics. Uh, the two most yeah. common tanagers that we get in Costa Rica are probably, at least in the Caribbean area, it's uh, palm tanager and blue-gray tanager. Blue-gray yeah. particularly has a really wide range. So it gets all over South America and it's, it's nice light blue. And this one is counterpart of blue-gray tanager. So it's mostly, you know, olive with some like dark colors in the back, like kind of darker olive. Yeah. It's always nice. Well, we can continue in the presentation, oh. if you don't mind. Yeah, I think we should go on. Shoot, man. Yeah. Uh, well, they, we were talking, Arturo, can you go back for just one? Okay, we were, we were talking about the first location in the Pacific, the second location up in the mountain tops in the orange area in the map, and then the third location we normally visit in Costa Rica. And I will, this is probably one of my favorite locations in the entire country is what we call the foothills so it's all that area that is in light green i don't know if you can see it as actually in between the orange and the pacific and a little bit in the caribbean as well <clears throat> i will say the foothills it's a location that it's basically in between lowlands and highlands and that why is that special well because a lot of birds don't uh, get to the mountain tops because it's too cold uh, and they don't either go to the lowlands because it's too hot, so they like to stay in that middle area. Uh, and that middle area is a big gradient, even if it doesn't look like. It's a big gradient that it, it has a lot of forest and a lot of birds use that, use, use that gradient in their favor. Because there are plants that bloom and produce fruits in the higher part of that gradient, and then at another time of the year in the lower part. So they are always moving up and down. And when we said this, these are birds that are very hard to predict their movements. And for instance, some of the rarest and more like wanted birds of the country, like a bird neck umbrella bird, like yellow ear toucanet, like um, several mannequins, like white crowned and white ruffed mannequins. So um, it's a nice area also because it's, it's a nice temperature, it's chilly and it it's normally has good infrastructure. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's what we call the foothills of Costa Rica. We uh, birthed that area from a very famous spot called the Arenal Volcano National Park. Uh, we go to the Arenal Volcano National Park and plus having all that beautiful scenery of a you know, recently active volcano, we also have this you know, foothill rainforest that is pretty impressive. So that's, that's one of my favorite locations because I grew up in that area. And if we go to the next slide, uh, Arturo. Oh, sorry. That, that bird over there, that's a keel built mutmut. And it's one of the specialties of the foothills of Costa Rica. And I will say, this is the most endangered species of mutmut of the entire world and probably if we, we see, if we see worldwide range that's going to be the rarest mutmut and it's uh, pretty regular in one location we have there in Arna volcano um, Kill Bill mutmut has this typical racket 
tail of all the motmots, as you can see in the picture on the right, and that beautiful eyebrow, blue eyebrow, and a little bit of rufus on their forehead. And, uh, and, and it's, you know, it's a pretty spectacular bird. But one interesting thing that happens there in Arenal is that it's the only known location in where the keel-billed motmot interbreeds, hybridize with the broad-billed motmot. So as you can see in the picture in the left, on the left, there are two birds. One keel-billed motmot is right over and the broad bill with the rufous head, it's right under. So that's, that's because that's the first ever picture taken of their behavior hybridizing, interbreeding. That was taken during one of our tours. Right. Yeah, so. Um, somebody just one administrative thing. Somebody's got a barking dog in the background. If you've got a barking dog, just mute your thing. Thanks, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> my, do my dog was right here next to me, trying to find out a dog. Yeah, I know, unless it's one Juan, Juan Diego's dog. <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> my dog was going yeah. nuts. <laughs> okay, so back to the keel build mod mod and, and uh, broad build mod mod mating. Wow, crazy. Yeah, it's very crazy. And uh, we know nothing about that. We don't know what happens next. Nobody have ever seen anything coming out of that nest. You know, they do, they build nests together. We have seen them building nests together. Um, wow. But we don't know what's happened next. We don't know if it's a big threat for the species. You know, like it happens with some of the, you know, uh, warblers in the U.S. Um, uh -huh. Or, or maybe it's nothing, you know, but um, we are under, we have that on that under research and it's one of the priorities for Costa Rican researchers. And interesting. And, and then, um, I mean, Ari Arianal has a ton of nice birds. Kind of mm -hmm. my first day, the first time I hired a guy was actually near Arianal National Park. And um, I, I remember we got like 80 species in the morning and I was stunned. Um, typically, how many bird species do you just get in the Arenal volcano area? So you do, you, you start in the afternoon and then you have a full mole morning? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, that depends. If we start from zero, you know, like, like it's the, our first day of birding and you start birding in yeah. Arenal and you start in the morning and finish in the afternoon, let's say one full day, you can perfectly yeah. get in a nice day, you know, 80, 90 species, you know, from 80 to 100 species yeah, in sure. one single day of, you know, hardcore birding. Um, in terms of, uh, of a trip, you know, in a trip you have already birded Caribbean lowlands and you have already birded cloud forest, you might get probably up to 30 to 50, no, 30 to 40 new species for the trip in gotcha. Harvard. So yeah. And so and so once you kind of get there, you're focusing on the, the sort of species you haven't gotten yet. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We will we will always when we're burning foothills, either Arenal or other foothills, we will always have those those really really rare you know rarities that we are always suspecting, uh, like um, bird neck umbrella bird, as I told you, yellow ear toucanet, um, a three wattle bellbird, depending on the time of the year, is also good there. Sure. Um, a lovely Cotinga, it's also there. But we're talking here really, you know, tough stuff, you know, really hard stuff. But then on a more like reliable basis, you know, birds that you have to get when you are in Arenal, we're talking about the Kill Bill Motmut, which is a bird you don't get anywhere else. You got to get Kill Bill Motmut. You should focus on the ant birds because Arenal is one of the best places for ant birds. So especially one called Dole Mantle Ant Bird. That one mm -hmm. it's a specialty of the of the foothills. But also the other fancy ant birds like oscillated ant bird, bicolor ant bird, uh, spotted ant bird are, are regular in there. Um, you know, you, you get the toucans there as well. You know, you get the kill build, you get the yellow throated, you get all that. Um, you get ones, crested one, great curacao, stuff like that are are you know expected to get. In Arenal. And, and, and great curacao, I mean, years ago, that was a sort of a toughish species to get. I mean, truly, Costa Rica birding is kind of, kind of funky um, compared to the rest of the world in that so many people, it's their first birding trip. Um, and, and we find this kind of sort of interesting birder market there. A lot of people kind of go down to Costa Rica on what I call the, you know, the, the, the mall tourist tour 
where, you know, they spend three nights at some hotel near like probably Carrara National Park. And, you know, they advertise birding, but it's, you know, it's, it's sort of on your own or with a, you know, one of the many, any bird guides of Costa Rica, but not really a top bird guide. And so then there's like a sort of second Costa Rica birding market of people who want to come back a second time and get, you know, some additional birds. And, and like great curacao, it's like a bird that most people miss on a mall, on, 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 on a mall, you know, package tour. Um, but you always get it in, in area and all, or it's, it's, I mean, you sound like it's a, it's easy to get. <laughs> well, we mostly get, you know, it's seasonal in R and L because when it's nesting, ah, okay. they just disappear. But uh, if we don't, when it's nesting in Arenal, it's not nesting in the Caribbean lowlands, which is the next spot we are going on this tour. I see. And and yeah, we normally get it in, in a trip in Costa Rica, either in the Caribbean lowlands or in the in the Caribbean foothills. So yeah, you get it. I will say you get it in probably ninety percent of the tours. Gotcha. And. And yeah, it's a bird. It's a very interesting bird because it's actually, you know, numbers in Costa Rica are actually pretty high. You know, it's, it's not a, you, go, you sometimes see groups of, you know, 10 great curacaos, eight great curacaos together. And, uh, and it's a bird that is uh, highly endangered in the rest of Central America, you know, as a Central American specialist. specialist. And uh, other places in Central America, as the hunting uh, rate is higher, the great curacaos are much you know, more complicated to get because they're being heavily hunted, poached. So Costa Rica, yeah. you know, as you know, it's a country that has no army. And for instance, there is not much uh, gun presence in this, you know, in, in the public, in the rural areas. So there's not much hunting nowadays. The, the, the law protects the wildlife, you know, pretty strongly. So hunting is highly reduced, probably I will say in the last 15 years. So you, you, get, you start seeing, you know, bigger and bigger numbers of birds like great curacaos or crested ones or black-faced black face solitaires. Thanks to that, yeah. Yeah, sure. Anybody got any other questions about the area and all area? Moving right along, man. Go on. Good. Um, the next uh, location, and this is almost the last one of the of the tour it's one of the places is the place where i'm standing right now <laughs> those are the caribbean lowlands i don't know if you can see in that little map that all that big green area all the way in the north northern part of the country all that what happens in costa rica millions of years ago is that that mountain range you know emerged from the ocean with all the volcanoes when the, you know that's, those mountain ranges start increasing in size and start growing and growing, and then with the rain, the the kind of you know materials have been washed for millions of years toward the ocean, creating those big flat areas, either in the Caribbean side and also in the Pacific. So that's why you have this you know birding composition you can see in the map. So the Caribbean lowlands is the largest portion of you know area with relatively similar birds. It covers a big area of the country, and it's probably, I will say, one of the most diverse and also one of the most complicated areas to bird watch in the country, because there are so many different types of birds, so many micro habitats in there, that is like, it's like the, the equivalent of the Amazon rainforest that you have in South America, but that's what we have in Central America. So it's like, very, very high diversity in a very small, you know, re relatively small geographic area. And um, for our tours, we normally go to La Selva area, either La Selva area or Boca Tapada area. Those two areas in the Caribbean are excellent for birding. And we get a lot of, you know, these very iconic species, like all the toucans are there and are very regular, very common. Uh, you get most of the tanagers, you get most of the darkness and, you know, a lot of the wrens are there. So it's, it's a very interesting area. It's a little bit hot and humid, so it's tricky to bird. Like what, what is happening right now, I don't know if you can see in the, in the place I'm right now, it's pretty sunny and uh, it can happen. I will put this my screen for a second so I can show you around. 
I can show you the sky, how green the vegetation is. They're in a little rural area here in Costa Rica, but you can see how bright blue the sky is right now, and it's supposed to be rainy season. <laughs> and this is Caribbean lowlands of Costa Rica. It's a bit hot. We have a lot yeah, of. Uh, Charles, can, can you put his his screen as the main screen for right right now? No, I cannot do that. So people okay. have to choose it themselves. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, anyway, I just want to show you. You know, that is a relatively green area, and it, the weather. What I, my point here is that the weather is very uh, unpredictable. So, like today, we're middle of rainy season, and it's still pretty hot. It was a pretty hot day. I mean, I was not expecting a hot day like this. And that's one of the nice things of the Caribbean uh, lowlands that it's always unpredictable and is uh, that that's what produces this high diversity. So if we go to the next uh, slide, uh, Arturo. That's, uh, if I have to choose one bird, one single bird, we, we should get, <laughs> When we are in Costa Rica, it will be this uh, great uh, green macaw. That's a video on the on the left of the great green macaw peeling a a seed and beach almond seed. The great green macaw, different than uh, the scarlet macaw, which is the other macaw we have in Costa Rica. The great green macaw, it's the most endangered bird, the most endangered parrot, for sure. And I will say it's in the top five of the most endangered birds of all Central America, and probably of the entire continent. So it's a pretty endangered bird. Numbers are really low. Um, it's a big bird. So you know, if, if It's about one meter long. So it's about like from your shoulder to the tip of your finger. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty much as long as a macaw can get, you know, a great green macaw. They have really long tails. Uh, they are very noisy and they depend on a specific type of tree, which is the yellow almond. Yellow almond grow only on the Caribbean lowlands of a few countries in Central America. And that tree is huge. And what happens is that it not only produces seeds that the macaw loves, it also it's the, the only nesting site they normally choose. And the nesting sites are created, you know, these this macaws nest in uh, cavities, in holes on trees. So, but what happens is that it's so big that they cannot dig their own hole. And it's very hard to find a hole that, that size for a macaw. So what happens is that the, these big yellow almond trees, they have really heavy branches because the wood is very heavy. When the branches fall down, they create a cavity in the main trunk of the of the yellow almond tree and that's what they use for nesting site and what happens over the years is that the people find out that the yellow almond wood it's a very valuable wood it's heavy and it's really nice looking so they started during last 30 40 years they started cutting down the yellow almond trees and for instance the population of, of great green macaw started started decreasing also, there was a, bit, a strong pressure on poaching, on removing the babies, you know, the chick nestlings out of the nest to sell it on black markets because it's such a valuable macaw that the population started going down and down until um, a group of Costa Rican researchers found the, you know, the key points to save the population and they started recovering. They, you know, banned the yellow almond uh, wood extraction and, and, and sales and now yellow almond it's you know it's illegal to cut and the population of great green macaw are you know recovering little by little still by no means is that it's not a common bird although in the caribbean lowlands of costa rica you occasionally get to see them flying over i normally heard great green macaw and i see them flying over like in the picture on the right that i took here from my home I see them probably on a daily basis. So at least two or four or sometimes six flying over my house. Um, so it's a, it's a very impressive bird. And I will say if I have to choose one bird as the main, main target in a Costa Rica birding trip, I will say probably great green macaw will be up there. 
Well, and it's a beautiful bird in flight, which I, I mean, I, I have to say, I, as I've gotten more into birding, which you can imagine, that's just true for my life. Um, <laughs> I've just learned to appreciate birds in flight more and more and more. I just the underwing, you know, I don't always need to see a perched bird. I, I love birds in flight. Um, so any other questions about the lowlands, the Caribbean lowlands of Costa Rica? And, 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 and Juan Diego, what are your sort of top five, ten favorite birds in the Caribbean low, lowlands besides Gregory Macaw, which used to be called military macaw, right? We don't have military. We have, um, you Okay, know, so that's a separate species. Separate species, yes. Military, okay. it's down in South in, in Southern America, starting in Panama, Southern, Eastern Panama. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But it's a counterpart of the of the great green macaw. It's also green, you know, and a little bit. Uh, yeah, a little I think I have a change in my life list I need to make. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what are your sort of favorite five or ten species in the Caribbean lowlands in your backyard, so to speak? Well, yeah, yeah. That's that's hard to choose. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know there I are so many birds. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been a bird guide for a long time, so. Um, I, have, I started developing an um, appreciation for rare birds <laughs> and not only the colorful ones because, you know, right. they, they give me more work. So I, I have a, a growing love for those. I will say great green macaw is definitely up in the top. You know, I, it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's a bird you get regularly on tours, but it's always so stunning to see and so always so amazing. Uh, and this conservation story behind is so nice that I will say great green macaw will be at the top. Uh, but then right under that i will say um the tawny faced quail will be the second one which mm, is a bird nice. yeah the tawny faced quail is a, a very secretive bird on the of the understory of the caribbean lowland rainforest and um i like it because um i found one <laughs> and it's a very rare bird no recent records in costa rica uh, other than hurt ones and um it happens that i was birding on a tour one day and I heard one at night at 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. at night and dinner time. And I heard it and I just, you know, pinned the location and then I went again a few days later and found one roosting on that place. And I took the picture and that was the first ever picture of a tawny faced quail in Costa Rica. And, and I got it in one tour, so <laughs> that was very nice. So the tawny faced quail definitely is number two. And I will put number three, probably gray-headed pepritis, which is a small bird that looks like a mannequin. It's very tough, very hard. Uh, that will be number three. And so there was gray-headed pepritis. Gray it's a small oh, mannequin. Oh, -like I got it. Yeah, mostly green olive, but it's just so rare and unpredictable that I like it. And then down below, I will probably put one of the big eagles, like black and um, black and white hawk eagle, probably which is really stunning, big raptor. Number fifth, I will, the last one, we'll put the tiny hawk, which I recently found a nesting one. So it's always nice. <laughs> it's what well, I, have I mean, we're head. really different bird watchers. I mean, one of my favorite families are hummingbirds, which you haven't oh, really? discussed at all. On the typical <laughs> tour, how, how many hummingbird species do, do you say see in our 13-day, our 12, 12 night tour? Yeah, hummingbirds are... are Relatively, I mean, Costa Rica is a relatively good place for hummingbirds. There are so many hummingbird uh, stations. So from the 51 species that we have in the country, I will say in a yeah. regular tour like this we're talking about, uh, probably over half of them, probably around 25, 30 species. Yeah, so that's nice. Most of them nice. come from the cloud forest. Cloud forest is one of really good places for hummingbirds. So most of the reserve in Monteverde have uh, hummingbird feeders and, and then you can get, you know, 13, 15 in one single spot. Yeah. Right. Well, we started kind of slow and we're, I mean, fast and then I slowed you down. So I'm going <laughs> to let you wrap up. We got about 10 minutes left. Any, any other questions right, right now from any participant? We have one last place to talk about only. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. 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 Go take, take about five minutes to do that and then we'll wrap up. Sure. The last place, um, because we were talking about general birding areas, you know, there's like the big yeah, areas sure. for birding, but there, between all that mosaic of birding areas, there are special places, you know, places where you have 
things that are, you know, you have to go there because there are unique things there. Two of those places uh, are the wetlands and some of the, you know, like peninsulas. Uh, we are talking about, I always like to include this place because it's so amazing for birds. It's up in the northern part where you see the number five in the little map. That's called Caño Negro Wildlife Refuge. That's a wonderful place. Uh, it's a wetland site. It's a Ramsar site. So what you do is basically boat tours in there in the kind of a low water areas and a river. And you get a lot of water species, water species mixed with Caribbean lowland species. So you get, you know, roseate spoonbills and stuff like that that are more common in all the herons, birds throw the tiger heron. You can get a gummy heron, which is very rare. And you can get like these two birds that are in the, in the slide right now in the presentation. Uh, the, the smallest kingfisher of the world, oh, I'm sorry, of the Americas, is the American pygmy kingfisher. That tiny little thing is about the, the size of your fist, a little bit smaller than your fist. If you close your hand, put your fist like this, that's a tiny, American pygmy kingfisher and um, it's a very spectacular bird it's, it's very regular in, the, in that location and also the other one on the left it's a yellow-breasted crake which crakes and rails are one of my favorite birds because you don't actually see them all the time so going to Caño Negro is your best shot to get at least two or three species of crakes and one of those is the yellow tiny very tiny little yellow crest yellow breasted crake which is specialized on walking on floating vegetation so like you heard it only lives in you know plants that grow over water and that's very interesting because once you get to Canyon Negro there's a lot of that kind of lily things uh, there are a lot of varieties of lily plants but those ones are you know, growing on the, on the, over the water, we get close with the boat. And once you get close with the boat, you see these tiny little birds walking over the plants there. And those are yellow-breasted crakes. They are so thin and so small that they don't, you know, they, they, they can walk over these tiny plants with no problem. So that picture is taken in Caño Negro, by the way. And um, yeah, um, you know, besides that, you can get other, you know, rainforest species there, like snowy cutting. Hey, can I just and, talk a little, just, just a question about boat boat tours i mean yeah. i've been on a ton of birding boat tours um sometimes i won't pick a oh like in, in west africa for example you know we do some boat tours and we maybe add one trip bird during the entire boat boat tour sounds like that's not too true in costa rica because they're getting the nice crakes but um you know the other aspects and i've also had some great bird boat boating tours where you get 13 species you don't get on the rest the rest of the tour but um you know the other aspect are skilled boatmen our boat staff boat boat you know i assume you don't do the boat boating yourself you have a boat you, have, <laughs> you know a person who drives who drives the boat so the yeah, person who drives yeah. the boat are are like four boating birding tours are they pretty pretty gifted at finding birds and most importantly like stopping the boat so you can get a good look at the bird. Yes, um, we carefully choose that. We do, we do have uh, people that are highly, you know, specialized on finding birds on boats. Um, so yeah, we, we do have chances to do three to four boat tours on a regular itinerary in Costa Rica. Normally the boats are very well adapted, you know, you're, we're talking about a country that has been doing ecotourism for 30 years or more. <laughs> and, and yeah, we've been passing through a lot of, you know, regulations and, and learning process to give a good experience on a boat tour. So the boats are normally, you know, big and stable, are normally flat bottom. So you can go, you know, slowly. And, and if you stop, it really stops. And then the people that is driving the boat is always person that knows about birds, that knows how to manipulate that boat and that has all the security in line. Great. Um, any other questions about Cananegro or anybody have past experiences there? All right, we'll jump to this last slide. This is our wrap up slide, bud. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is where you can see all that. There's where you can see all the birding, main birding locations, plus those little stars you see on the map. There are two. It should be two. Um, one, it's um, 
one is located in um, Talamanca Mountain Range, which is the, the Savegre area I told you. So we normally recommend if you want to stay a little longer, which is, you know, if you want to get more birds, we, stay, we recommend staying in Savegre area or Talamanca Mountain Range area, which means the cloud forest down by the, by the east, southeast. And um, that's one location for, to get more of these endemics, 70 endemics that are located there. And the other location we recommend, it's a very popular destination as well, is in the South Pacific, and that's the Osa Peninsula. That's the other star you see down south. That's a little peninsula that has a lot of uh, unique birds there that are trapped in that little piece of land. And uh, it's the best place for Cotingas. You know, you get yellow-billed Cotinga, turquoise Cotinga in the same place. Uh, you get that mangrove hummingbird, which is a very tough endemic. And you get the black chick ant tanager, which is an ant tanager that is strictly endemic to Costa Rica only. Um, because in case you don't know, there are only three endemics of mainland Costa Rica and over 80, 90 endemics to share with other nearby countries. Those three endemics, one is the black chick ant tanager and is located in the Osa Peninsula. So that place is another highlight. You can, if you wanna do a little bit extended birding, you should include those. Um, Osa Peninsula, it's a little bit remote, so you need more time. But in general terms, what we're talking about in, in this presentation covers most of the iconic birds and in a relatively um, a short driving times. Because as you can see in the main numbers, in the, where the little birds with the names are, with the numbers are, um, everything is very close and everything is connected. So when you're birding, time is gold, right? Time matters. So spending as, many, as, as little time driving between locations is important to maximize the time birding at the location. So it does not make sense to travel from one point to, all the way down to the other and spend a whole day driving. So for us, you know, it's always better to spend that whole day, you know, birding. And if we have to drive, we can stop in between, bird in between, and then go to the next place. So. Right. And Right, in true Uli, we've done Osa Peninsula tours. We had a Texas birding group who did a custom tour with us and we sort of birded on the way, the way down. We've also, but we typically encourage people to fly and then just do an extension to the Osa Peninsula. So just sort of wrapping up here, anybody got any questions they want to throw in? Anything good at the feeder? The feeder's been a uh, bust today, dude. Let's see, we have something here. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe let's, let's take a look. If I can find it. So far oh, today, great tail grackle, clay colored thrush, palm tanager. Let's hope for a nicer bird. Not, and all birds are nice, but you know. Let me see if Boy, I can do that sun is thing. Brutal oh, on shoot. the scope, dude. Yes, this is so, so hot right now. We, we have here. The other day. Oh, really well. no. Where is it? It flew apparently. Well, we lost it. It was a blue gray tanager. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. It's hot. Which yeah. is really one of the first birds that got me into bird watching, believe it or not. <laughs> um, so, you know, typically in our 13 day, 12 night tour, we get what, about 350, 400, 400 total species? Yeah, yeah, I will say uh, it depends a lot on the birding group. Yeah, of course. We don't, yeah, we don't course. push, we don't push to get, you know, lots of birds, just to brag about that. We normally go at the, uh, you know, at the speed the group wants to go, you know, if, uh, um, but in average, you know, even taking it easy, you can get over 350 birds. If the group want to go faster, you know, and want to get more birds, you can get to 400 birds, 400 bird species. And, and then, and then the Osa Peninsula and Antula can add what another 660, 80 species or more like yeah, 100, 150, because it's really different <laughs> habitat. It's really different habitat. I will say, yeah, it can perfectly add 80 new species depending okay. on the itinerary, depending how we, how we did right. in the main itinerary. But it adds a lot of cool species as well. Yeah. 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 So any, any questions about Costa Rica bird or earning from anybody in the group? Jean, Jean Susan, Jane, Annis, anything to add? I'm going to hit the little thing. Uh, this is Robert. Uh, what's a normal Hey, Ro or, Robert Shoot. Sure. what do you got? I just wanted to say thank you for uh, a very nice presentation, and Juan Diego, uh, you were plainly an expert, and uh, 
I hope that uh, my wife and I will be able to visit Costa Rica here in the next uh, year or two when the uh, uh, troubles have died down <laughs> for traveling. Right, and, and and Costa Rica is opening, we think, August 1st. And yeah. um, whether Americans will be allowed to come will be a big question. Um, and they and they have had a pretty good COVID experience so far, but you guys do have rising cases. So, And let's all hope we have a vaccine between now and March. I hope between now and January. Eric, yeah, that would make for a good season. That's what we're waiting for. And uh, Yeah, very reasonable. Yeah. And yeah. we're pariahs and, and, in America until then. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And be careful. Everybody stay safe. And, um, you know, and uh, don't be afraid to reach out to us at, uh, I, I always respond to most sales, sales calls at Charles at PI Bird.com. So I am the executive partner. I do probably 70% of the sales. <laughs> well, Arturo has been kicking my butt recently, um, which I'm pretty proud out of him on, on that. But, um, yeah, no, Arturo is really up and coming on the sales, sales front, but, don't hesitate to contact any of us. If you email me at charles at com, I will forward your email to another person or probably just take it myself. Um, and just a couple things about the partnership for international bird watching. Um, we do always recruit premier local bird guides in each con- con- country, the sort of expert bird finders who live locally. Um, because we're not flying tour leaders from around the world, to lead the tours. Our tours are often 20 or 30% less in cost than our competition. And, and truly, the word partnership, both with the guides and with keen logistical operators as well, results in us often finding better value lo- lodging for bird watching. Um, and the typical average quality on our tours for lodges are often close to four stars. Um, I do find people love eco lodges and they rate them really high. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, oh, and we always save an acre for bird conservation, which I've been forgetting to say, but um, in 15 years in business, um, we save at least one acre for birding for each booking. Um, in 15 years in, in business, we've saved 85,000 acres. Um, any that. other questions before we wrap it up? Anything else on the feeder? The uncooperative feeder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well, we have flake colored thrushes again. They're taking over. Yeah, again. The sun is, yeah, the sun is very hot. I'm and sorry the sun about is that. right yeah. in our face. I saw that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the, yeah. the feeder thing has been a bust. Any other questions or comments at all? All are welcome. Thank you so much, Juan Diego. <clears throat> Excellent. My pleasure. My Thanks. pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, hey, and one administrative thing. Um, we are recording this. People do miss this thing, and we end up posting it on Facebook. If you do not want your recorded voice on the on the uh, presentation, please email Arturo at operations at PIBird.com, and we will uh, edit out your, your content. Um, Though I don't think we've got any last names on the entire thing. Um, anything else, folks? Any other questions at all? Hearing none, we we hope to get you guys on a Costa Rica birding trip soon. Um, we realize soon for some of you, maybe after there's a vaccine. Um, and we do have a Costa Rica birding trip September 27th. Everybody in the group is prepared to go as long as um, you know, uh, they are welcome there <laughs> and we shall see. Um, and, uh, and, and truly we do have added safety measures on the tour, but, uh, um, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Um, anything else folks, any other questions at all? Great. Arturo, I think we're going to call it a wrap. Yep. Wait. I, I will just want to say, um, yeah, thank you all of you for this. I will, I will especially thank uh, Charles and Arturo uh, for, you know, working with us and here, as, as, as Charles suggests, uh, this uh, partnership, it's a really good idea and uh, it works for us, the local guides here. This pandemic is hitting strong down here. You know, Costa Rica lives out of tourism 
a big big part of the of the people and uh, and this is you know a big big issue but we hope that with partnerships like this we can you know get over this situation and and in upcoming years we can you know get back to normal and and, and you know keep birding as it was and yeah. and we appreciate we appreciate arturo and charles for working with us here in costa rica and we appreciate all of you guys for joining today from my house here in the caribbean lowlands you yeah. think and, and and a lot of people are booking tours for late 2021 and early 2022 so if you just need to get your uh your birding trip in your back so you can dream a little bit don't hesitate to call or email email us um thank you all for your time today we appreciate it very very much and um i think we'll sign off here thanks oh, and thank you to thank you juan time. diego juan diego thank you bye thank you Charles, bye. Okay. thank you bye-bye see you bye-bye see you in costa rica <laughs> bye <laughs>